the weather aircraft. So, uh, MPD, you have a go to proceed. I copy, uh, GLS, MPD. Go ahead. Uh, pick up the clock on your count, please. Copy. Three, two, one. Mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. Ground sequence has been initiated. Ground launch sequencer has been initiated. MTD SRO 212. Go ahead, SRO. Okay, I want to confirm that uh, you will be holding at T minus five if the aircraft are not at their TSP at that point. If I don't have your final clear to launch, we will hold at T minus five minutes. All right, copy. Countdown may be holding at the T-minus five minute mark, waiting for a clearance from the range safety officer. CLT OTC, configure fuel cell, essential bus source switches. That's in work. Alec Gutierrez is now flipping switches in the orbiter's crew cabin to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. Essential buses are connected to the fuel cell. Copy that. Houston flight controllers are sending stored program commands, which are the final update on antenna management. This update ensures that the orbiter has the latest information to communicate with different ground tracking stations during the flight. T minus 7 minutes 30 seconds. Orbiter the orbiter access arm is being retracted away from the uh, Columbia's crew module at this time. It can be re-extended in just a few minutes if necessary. Uh, go ahead, SRO. Uh, at this point, we may not be able to get the aircraft at TST in, in time, and uh, suspect we may have to hold for about a minute at T minus five. I copy. GLS copy. And GLS will tag up with SRO at about five minutes thirty seconds. You have a hold pending at five minutes at this time. I copy. NTD ISO. Go ahead, ISO. Three quarters reactivate. Copy. T minus six minutes thirty seconds and counting. It appears we may be holding briefly at the T minus five minute mark prior to starting the orbiter's auxiliary power unit. The range safety officer needs the, some tracking aircraft on station. Start ATU and hydraulic strip chart recorder. Recorder started. PLT OTC perform ATU pre start. Your pre starts didn't work. Just past T minus six minutes, and pilot Duterrez is performing auxiliary power unit pre start. He's configuring switches in the cockpit to put the APUs in the ready to start configuration. NTD SRO 212. Go ahead, SRO. You have a final range clear to launch. I copy. Launch director, you copy. I copy. NTLS, we will not hold the clock at T minus five minutes. I copy that, it's been cleared. AP, AP pre starts complete. Copy. We do have a final clear to launch from the range safety officer and will not be holding at T minus five minutes. We'll just count all the way through. T minus five minutes and counting. Will you have a go for APU start? APU start. APU starts and work. And CDR reconfigure heaters. Roger, that's in work. Commander O'Connor has been asked to reconfigure the orbiter's heaters for launch. I can give you 1082. Thank you. T minus 4 minutes 20 seconds and counting. 
Ground lock sequencer has terminated liquid oxygen replenish to the external tank and is initiating lock strain back. And we got three APUs up and running, OTC. Copy that. OTC, CDR, heaters are reconfigured. Thank you, CDR. T-minus four minutes in counting. We've got three good APUs and the orbiter's heaters have been reconfigured for launch. Final purge sequence of the three main engines is underway. The valves on the engines are being prepared for engine start. At the one minute point in the count, an engine ready indication will be given. A profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces has started. The orbiter flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern and the main engines are being positioned for launch. T-minus three minutes and counting. Liquid oxygen tank is now being pressurized for flight. Just a few minutes away from the launch of Columbia on a nine-day mission with seven crew members. Morning memory, verify no unexpected errors. That's in work. Attraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood is now underway. T minus two minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Flight crew, close and launch your visors and initiate O2 flow. Have a good trip. Roger that. T-minus two minutes and counting. Scotch warning, memory clear is complete. Nothing. Liquid hydrogen replenishment is being terminated and the hydrogen tank is being pressurized for flight. Crew has locked their visors for flight. Now less than two minutes away from launch. Today's launch marks the 41st launch for the shuttle program and the third shuttle flight this year. We've got uh, three engines ready for flight. T minus one minute, 15 seconds. All systems are go for launch for Columbia's 11th space flight. T-minus one minute and counting. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. Coming up on the T-minus 31 second mark, when we have a go for auto sequence start. T-minus 31 seconds. Columbia's full redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions for the remainder of the count. T-minus 20 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. T-minus 10, 9. We have a vote for engine start.
downrange distance now 15 nautical miles, velocity 3,400 feet per second. Standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. SRB separation confirmed. Columbia now at 174,000 feet. Downrange distance 34 nautical miles. Standing by for the performance call. Columbia performance is nominal. Roger. Columbia's first stage performance is nominal. Time 2 minutes 30 seconds into the flight. Altitude now 204,000 feet. Downrange distance 46 nautical miles. Velocity 4,700 feet per second. All three main engines still at 104%. Good hydraulics and good electrical systems aboard the orbiter. Columbia, two-engine Ben Greer. Roger, two-engine Ben. Columbia can now reach the primary landing site in Morocco should one engine fail. However, all three still at 104%. Altitude 265,000 feet, velocity 5,500 feet per second. Columbia now 78 nautical miles from the launch site. Auxiliary power units providing hydraulic power to the vehicle still performing well. <laughs> 